Jumping in at this spot, I load my gun straight away, as with most spots. If it's fishy, current's pushing, and you know there's fish there, it can be a matter of seconds before a nice big kingfish comes up to check you out. It can be the noise of the boat motor coming in, a few splashes here and there. They're very inquisitive fish, so you've got to be ready. Some big leather jacket fish in front here. When I arrive to a spot like this, I like to first approach the ledge or a rock or wherever I'm diving cautiously, moving slow, hugging the rocks, looking for any snapper which could be parked up in the current or in a crevice, crack or gutter. There's a lot of fish parked up here on this point. The current's pushing hard up, bringing up food and nutrients. Fish are happy. A very nice congregation of fish so it's a great place to just hang around and see what happens. We've got a few fish species here, the blackfish with white dots, the demisel. We have butterfly perch, which are the pinky looking fish with a spot. We have big silver drummer, red moki, all sorts. No snapper was seen, but we started to find some big schools of bait fish coming in once Josh had joined me. Lots of jack mackerel, some small trevally, smaller kahiru, all the good stuff, all the favourite food of a kingfish. Okay. Big cullies and shit. That's good. Yeah, yeah that's real nice. After diving up and down in these huge bait schools with Josh for about 15 minutes, no kingfish were showing, so we decided to head in shallow hunt for some crayfish for a while and then come back and check the spot out once the tide was pushing even harder, closer to the full. There was some beautiful crayfish country around, nice big boulders scattered everywhere with nice cracks and crevices underneath, clean kelp beds, all the good sign. We hunted for quite a while, about 30 minutes. I came up with zero, Josh managed one nice crayfish, so all good. That's the nature of crayfish diving. Some days you scout huge areas of coast and come up empty handed, but all it takes is to find one nest in my experience. Once you find a cray nest, they seem to just live in there forever, um, they come and go, so yeah, mark those spots if you find them. Just coming out of the kelp bed here after hunting for the crays and saw a nice puffer fish cruising off. Often see them just parked up in the shallow water. Very cool. One last dive down, trying to find a crayfish, just scanning every boulder and rock, looking for some feelers poking out for that unmistakable sign of a crayfish living underneath. No luck, 
That all good. We cruise back to the spot that we started at, which was full of bait fish. Still plenty of demisel here. Pretty awesome to see. They're always fun to dive with. Very chilled, relaxed fish. But no kingfish. Just a nice eagle ray here, cruising past. That's spear fishing, I just love it. If you're not sparing fish, you're just enjoying the sea life underwater. It's just incredible. Dropping down, I made sure our float mark in the reef was secured well in a crack. A pair of cray nooses attached to a sinker. Good old Kiwi Ingenuity did the job. Here I am again, swimming up current, trying to find the face of the pinnacle here where the current would be pushing and bringing up nutrients to all the fish life here. I was getting closer. A few usual reef suspects here. Red mochi, leather jacket, some kelpfish, or hiwi hiwi. Nice big red mochi here. I finally make it to the face of this pinnacle and Currents pushing into it hard, so this is where I'm going to dive down and work for a while and try to see if a, a kingfish will come in. I was surprised not to see a snapper parked up there, so I backed off quietly just in case one was cruising around the bottom where I didn't see. Once again, I make my way down onto the pin here. Just checking the scenery, no sign of bait fish or anything, just the demisel. And then something catches my eye and a big kingfish just comes bruising up over the kelp here. Comes in fast, doesn't like the look of me and takes off. I make the call and take a bit of a long shot. The shark enters a fish, I'm pretty stoked. I know it's not the best shot but I hold on, make my way to the surface, let a bit of the reel line out and call out for Josh for a second shot. Now, I would never usually take a shot like that on a kingfish. I consider that too far away, but it was by itself, so it wasn't hanging around like they usually do when they're in a school of three or four or more. Josh cruises down to assess the situation. I know I've done a poor shot. Kingfish is fighting hard. It's flapping around in the kelp, and um, I'm quite worried that it might tear out. At that distance, it's not a sure thing that the shaft has gone right the way through, hence why I never take shots at that distance. I just really wanted a kingfish, and uh, that looked like it was going to be my only chance for the day. Josh drops down, calmly, waits for the right moment and takes an awesome shot right through the head. The fight's over. With the excitement to jump in the water at the spot, I had forgotten to put the knife in my pocket. Luckily Josh had his and put the kingfish 
out of its misery. Straight into the brain, instant kill. I bleed the fish straight away as usual. I'm not too worried about the sharks, I'm more worried about the quality eating of the fish. It was a short fight once Josh had that shot through. It became a bit of a mess on the surface but we sorted that out and it was back into it. Time for Josh to get a kingfish. Pretty stoked to get a kingfish. It had been a fair while since my last one and it's just top eating fish. Very versatile, very good tasting and plenty of it. We don't muck around wasting any time. Guns are reloaded and we're back at the pin diving down on the edge here, waiting for another kingfish to show itself. The current's starting to push very hard now with the incoming tide as it pushes up onto this ledge. We're just finning full time just to keep up in the same spot. This makes it pretty hard holding our breath but luckily the terrain was quite shallow here and we didn't have to dive deep. I dive down myself and see a cool yellow black fish down below. Clear black and yellow stripes on the side here swimming off. Chuck a comment below if you know what it is. While I was mucking around Josh had been busy and had got a shaft into one of the kingfish he had seen earlier. You get a good shot? I'll have a quick look, eh? This is the traditional setup for spear fishing if you're not using a real gun like myself. The spear gun connects to a float line which connects to the float. You can let your gun go and just grab that float line which is connected to the buoy and just slowly fight that fish until it tires. I dive down, spot the kingfish down below. Shafts going right through the middle of the fish. It looks like a really good solid holding shot, so swim back up and let Josh deal to the fish. It's really important when fighting kingfish to have good line management. Looks pretty solid, bro. Make sure you know where your line is on the surface, not to get tangled up, especially once that kingfish gets up close. They like to run circles and tangle you up. That can be quite dangerous. The fish has hurt pretty bad. It might have even nicked the spine, the shaft. Josh brings the fish in close. Good bear hug, hands in the gill, puts it out. Even with good line management and experience from a diver like Josh, when those kingfish start running circles, the line just goes everywhere as you can see, so you've got to be aware of your situation. Another kingfish on board and we are stoked. Mine, I won't get it there, I'll just grab a knife. Sweet, so we just jumped in on this pin and yeah, Kingy came flying in. 
and um, we went flying out so I just took a long shot and it was a terrible shot. Hit it right here in the tail. It was just hanging, just hanging on so yeah. Not long after Josh whacked another one so happy days man. Sweet. We dove a few more spots that afternoon, finishing up on this weed line here. Wasn't much going on, it's a nice big goat fish going around, but uh, yeah we weren't too set on taking those today. We had a nice big kingfish each, so yeah, did a bit of diving, exploring and then called it for the day. boat on the trailer and we'll cruise on. Crack a few cold beers and uh, Friday afternoon, weekend ahead. More beautiful weather, so yeah, do this. Incredible evening. Hey g'day everyone, I'm back, um, got home late last night around 10 o'clock so there was no way I was going to get into the filleting and uh, it's good to let that fish sit overnight anyway so it had, um, I got a few bags of fresh ice so it should be just set really well and um, yeah it's going to be easier to fill it and nice and nice and cool so good quality flesh. I'm here in my little outdoor home gym setup, so I'm going to hang the kingfish, you may have seen me fill it a kingfish in one of my other videos this way so hang it up by the tail and, and fillet it that way on large fish like kingfish it's actually really easy the, the fillets just peel off um, it's not my method I've just seen a few other people using it online so sharing the love it's a really good method so um, yeah, if you haven't tried it give it a go so yeah we're gonna hang it up here and get those fillets off and definitely have a cook up some raw sashimi today and a few kingfish steaks for dinner or something like that can't wait Righto, let me just see this kingfish. So yeah, still plenty of ice in here. Shove ice all up in its stomach in there. 
cavity and everywhere, so it should just be in primo nick. Beautiful. Right, we'll tie um, the rope up here first. You could do this on your, your washing line or anywhere really like that. Just tie a bowline. Any knot will do. Right, it helps if you have a spare set of hands here, but I'll make do. I'm one of those guys that <laughs> just ties a lot of knots. I only know a bowline and a, and a hitch, but um, yeah, if you don't know a knot, tie lots, lots of grannies, granny knots, and uh, be right. That looks like a reasonable height to work at, so that's holding. Get that one out of the way. Right, beautiful. Fish is hanging. Quite a nice size kingfish this one, I'm pretty happy with it. Right, let's get into it. Alright, we're just making this incision cut across the top there come down this back edge find that backbone run your knife along that all the way down follow that all the way down there we'll do one cut on an angle across there behind the pec fin You can leave a lot of meat here because that's going to be our wings. We'll cut those off there. Nice, two nice big wings. And yeah, so I've made that cut along here, up the back line. And then we'll cut one down there to meet the belly. And then we'll just peel it all off like a big fillet. So let's do that. That flash is just beautiful. You know it's good when you've bled it properly in the water. Well guys, something happened there with the footage. I lost the rest of it, so here's me doing the same thing in a previous video. As you can see, that fillet just peels right off. Very minimal flesh wastage. It's a great little method. Beautiful. Alright guys, um, just going to show you how to do a quick kingfish capracio. hope I said that right. Um, yeah, I've just been eating kingfish the last few days and just, uh, it's so versatile, it's amazing. It's an incredible eating fish. Um, so, so yeah, I'm just going to whip up a quick capracio. Um, it's a raw fish dish, half cooked basically. You're going to put a bit of lemon juice on this and yes, yeah, it's, it's easy and just absolutely beautiful. It's a great dish to bring along to a barbecue or something if you want to impress some people. It's delicious and um, pretty hard to stuff up, so let's get into it. Right, so I've got a piece of this kingfish loin left. So it's a nice big square steak which comes off the back and it's um, perfect for slicing up for sashimi and stuff. It's been sitting in the fridge for a few days. Um, it's aged quite well and it's going to be stunning. Avocado, lemon, capers. Salt, pepper, olive oil, a bit of wasabi if you want. So I usually add chopped parsley up, but I forgot this today, unfortunately. So I would definitely add some chopped parsley and sprinkle that all on top, but we'll make do. So yeah, let's get into it. Nice and thin. Thinly slice that kingfish up. Could do with a bit of a, I could do with a bit more of a sharpened knife, but this will do. Nice and thin. Right, so we've got all our kingfish sliced up nice and thin. Beautiful. So we're just gonna get that on the plate. You can get all fancy and 
display it all nicely. I'm a bit rough, it all tastes the same, so we'll just spread it out. The main thing is to kind of get a, a rough, even base. So it all gets the ingredients on top. Something like that, beautiful. I usually don't add any avo, but since we forgot the parsley today, we'll do some avo. Bit of avo around. Avo pairs really well with raw fish. Absolutely love it, so something like that. Right, so I've got some capers. Capers are awesome as well. We'll just sprinkle a bunch on there, like so. Good old salt. Pepper. Olive oil. Now I usually do do parsley like I said, but we'll make do today. It's good to try new recipes. And then plenty of lemon juice. So you can leave it for 30 minutes or so in the fridge and it will pretty much cook that fish. We can just tuck into it right now. But it is nice if you haven't had that fish chilled to set it in the fridge. But yeah, that's going to be delicious. I will leave that for about 10 minutes. Just let that lemon juice cook the fish slightly. But that is just stunning. Beautiful. So yeah, just quick recipe. Some people like to chop up garlic finely. Um, all sorts of different stuff you can add. You can just experiment. But I just like to keep it pretty simple. And uh, going to have to clean the floor up later. Just poured half of that juice on the floor. <laughs> Anyways. It's stunning, give it a go at home, easy recipe and super nice. Bit of that, bit of that, bit of caper. Mm. Wow. Always good, always good, stunning. If you leave that fish in a few um, if you leave that fish for a few days in the fridge. Especially if you know how to dry age kingfish, kahawai, any any fish similar like that, it just softens up and just the flavour comes out and it's beautiful. So, anyways, give that recipe a try at home, guys, and hope you enjoyed that uh, adventure, another mission out shooting fish and exploring the ocean. Plenty more to come. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed that to show your support and write a comment if you want to see anything out there, any suggestions. Any questions, anything like that. Love helping anyone out. It's a great sport. I hope more people get into it. So yeah, see you out there. Cheers.